Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my weekly deck reviews. As I was starting this video, I literally heard Ricardo from Lucy and Ricardo in my head from the show I Love Lucy. And the voice was, Lucy, you have some splaining to do. <laughs> because you see, the decks that I planned to work with last weekend may have shifted ever so slightly or a lot. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. First, fair warning though, I said I was going to jump right into it, and then I'm like, no, never mind, I have something else to say first. I have a cup of tea, and I'm going to try not to cough on you, but I'm probably going to cough on you, so sorry. Still dealing with death cold voice. But I feel great, and thank you to everybody who has been reaching out and wishing me get well better, wishing Peggy get well better. Um, we're getting there. <laughs> I actually feel pretty much normal, just the voice and the coughing, which is super annoying and making me a little bit grumpy. Just a little bit. <laughs> but let me explain about the decks that I was working with last week. So last week I said I was going to be working with the Dream Raven Tarot. I don't have the guidebook with me, I'm sorry. These are the backings. These are by Beth Salinen. And I have to say, the artwork is really cute. And you guys know my aesthetic if you've been watching my channel for a bit. And if not, welcome. Welcome to my cute world. Um, because I tend to really love cute decks. They're not the only things I love, but I love cute decks. And I love this coloring. It made me happy to look at. And after last weekend's video, I sat down with this deck right away. I was pretty sure I was going to trim it to bond with it. You know, maybe take the sides off and the tops off. But I sat with it and I flipped through every single card and really looked at it, which is something that I do every time I have a deck that's new to me. New to me. And I got to a certain point in the flip through and I was like, I don't want to work with this. I don't want to read with this deck. Which felt a little hasty, I'll admit. And right after last weekend's video, I started getting some comments from people who were like, oh, that deck looks really beautiful. I want to pick it up. And I, I felt responsible. And so I was like, well, actually, I kind of just broke up with that deck. <laughs> Um, so when I had made last weekend's video, I'd mentioned that this deck is the reason that I didn't get the Crow Tarot by MJ Coulinane, which has been picked up by US Games. It was originally produced as an indie deck. When I realized I wasn't going to enjoy working with this deck, which I'll talk about a little more in just a moment, I went out and bought the Crow Tarot from my local metaphysical shop Reflections, which if you are in BC, please check them out. They are in Coquitlam and they are amazing. But anyways, I ran over there, well, drove technically, and bought that deck. And then I came home and I decided to spontaneously go live. I didn't even look at the time. Like, I think I went live alongside other people and like, it was just this random thing. And I decided to do a side by side and kind of get other people's feedback on this deck versus the Crow Tarot. So I will link that up in the cards so that you can watch it if you are so inclined. This deck, um, when comparing next to the Crow Tarot, it wasn't entirely fair because they're completely different art styles. And as much as I love this art style though, there just were so many cards in here that I just didn't get. Um, and I really wanted to see, because I feel like it's doing so well in some cards of depicting a Rider Waite Smith meaning, like that's pretty decent for the Five of Pentacles. Um, there were other cards that just didn't do it for me. And a good example, is the Two of Cups. Now, Cups is a suit that I obviously feel very strongly about. Again, as you watch my channel, you'll get to know that that is my favorite suit because I am a total water baby. But the Two of Cups doesn't even have a second raven in it. And that bummed me out because it's all about connections. And I was like, but there's only one. And of all the cards in the deck that should have two, it should be this one. And it should be the Lovers, which I believe does have two. Yeah, the Lovers has two. And it should also be the Three of Cups that should have multiple birds. Because the Three of Cups is about connections and celebrations with others. And again, only one. And there were other examples like that as I went through the deck that just didn't jive for me. Like I didn't see the meaning. Another card I really struggled with was Strength. Um, there's this little bitty dragonfly, and then there's this big raven. And the raven's kind of merging with the tree, or unmerging with the tree. And here's the thing. You can 100% dive into this artwork and get beautiful meanings out of this deck. It just wasn't the kind of imagery I like to see 
in certain cards and that is a me thing that is a personal taste kind of thing and I love this artist you guys know I treasure my guardian tarot and I actually find this art style oh I'm just gonna drop them because that's what I do on my videos I actually find this art style to be extremely charming and beautiful I just don't resonate with the way the cards are depicted here's another one that really threw me this is our eight of wands which I'm used to eight of wands depicting movement and energy and things being kind of sometimes out of hand and here we have fence posts for wands it's very stable and static I don't see any movement and then here's our nine of wands or sorry I think it was the seven of wands yeah here's our seven of wands movement dynamic energy it's literally like they're backwards now in the guidebook the artist makes a case for the meaning for every single one of these and I think she does a beautiful job but again it just isn't for me and the more that I looked at it the more I was confident and you can watch my process like like up close and personal if you watch that video because I literally go through it with some people who are watching live and commenting and stuff but as I went through it the more I looked at it the more I was like this is not a deck for me so this deck is going to be rehomed I will be trading it or selling it or doing something with it at some point but I did not want to work with it for a whole week because it's supposed to be a fun process for me I don't want to force anything to work that's just not working and this was a trade and the deck I traded away I was more than happy to trade away so I don't feel like anything bad happened there and it was really cool to be able to get a chance to take a look at this deck up close and personal because I'd never really seen it and it just I just thought it was so cute when I first saw it and I did enjoy flipping through the images so then I picked another deck for my collection to work with last week that I had not worked with yet. <coughs> There's going to be some coughing, I'm sorry. And this is, look at this gorgeous Peggy bag. Wow, ah, it's so beautiful. Look at the embroidery. This is the Robin Wood Tarot by Robin Wood. And this is a deck that has been on my radar since the 90s when I was first starting to read tarot because it reminded me of the kind of imagery you would see in the Rider Waite Smith. Very classical, very clean. I'm not a huge fan of this particular Nine of Cups. Um, so what I did with this deck this week is I, as soon as I flipped through all the images, I was like, I like every single one of these images. They may not be my favorite for every single card, but I get the, the meaning in every single one. So it's very Rider Waite Smith, but with a new fresh take. I love the way the symbology is everywhere and really easy to spot. You don't really have to work for it, you know what I mean? Judgment as the phoenix coming out of the cauldron is so amazing and perfect. But I feel like the symbology is just, its all the cards are just depicted in a way that makes the meanings so easy to see. Even easier than the writer Waite Smith, which is one of the most, once you start to learn it, is one of the most easy um, decks to read obviously, to read Rider Waite Smith meanings in. I just said a dumb. You guys caught it here, right on Support of Tarot. You got to see me say a dumb. Of course, Rider Waite Smith meanings are real clear on the Rider Waite Smith deck. I'm such a dork. I, it just amazes me that you guys still watch me. <laughs> but in a good way, in a good way, I'm being playful. But, you know, okay, for example, Knight of Cups. Horse is made, it's like a mer horse. We're in the waves. The knight has like a seashell helmet and bare legs. It's just, it's all right there for you. Um, I just, I really like it. So as soon as I flipped through all the images, I got really excited because I started to notice symbols in a way that I don't normally necessarily notice them in decks like this. So I pulled out my camera. I also just freshly had my voice back a bit. This is like a great voice comparatively. And so I pulled out my camera and I filmed a very in-depth walkthrough of this deck. And, oh, nudity. Um, so I went through every single card of the majors and the minors. I talked about the symbols, how I see the symbols in the card, how I read the card, um, what it means to me personally, and how I relate to it. So it ended up being a really, really, really long video. And I will link it in the cards for you. I had so much fun making it and I know long videos are not everybody's cup of tea but if you are one of those people that's like yes give me the long videos then let me know what other decks you want me to cover in a video like that where I get into really detailed walkthroughs because it was actually really fun to do. I may not be able to do them every single week or anything like that but I will definitely do them when I can if I know there's ones you guys want to see. So anyways Robinwood Tarot 
really enjoyed working with this. The way that I worked with this this week is I used it for my daily polls, of course, for like cards of the day and that sort of thing. I did a Beltane reading for myself. Um, I also used this for any personal readings I needed to do. And I also am using this deck or was using this deck with Tracy at Temperance Tarot's Reversed Tarot Challenge on Instagram. I will link the Instagram post with the uh, challenge details down below. Basically how it works is that you get a prompt. You can do as many or as little as you want. And then how I've been working with the challenge is that instead of like randomly drawing cards, I've been just like flipping through my deck and setting aside any cards that I think speak to that prompt. And then of the ones that I select, I pick two. Um, so far only two. If I'm ever tempted to do more, I'll do more. Um, or less, I'll do less. But I've been picking two and writing about what I think that means uh, with the prompt. And it's been a really cool way to just kind of sit with my deck every morning and flip through the images while looking at them, which is something I feel like I really enjoy doing. So I'm loving that challenge. It's a little different. It's not just like a random draw. Um, so that's been really fun this week as well. So cardstock, thin, old school Llewellyn cardstock, nothing super fancy, but it rifle shuffles great. It felt great in the hands. It's one of those decks that you know if you use it a lot, it'll get like a, might even, it might already have a bit. A little bit of a bow to it, it'll get that wear going, which if you geek out on having a well-worn deck, you would love. Um, it does come with a little white book, which is actually pretty darn good considering it's relatively thick for a little white book, has a couple spreads in it, three to be exact. There is no page number, so I couldn't tell you, but it's like not super thin. And there's like a good paragraph on an upright and a paragraph on a reverse meaning for every single card. This is good, but when this deck first came out, it came out with a full size guidebook, which I've mentioned in that long in-depth walkthrough. I really think I wanna get my hands on that full size guidebook because I've really been jiving with the things I've been reading about this author and this artist and her take on the cards has been fantastic um, from what I've seen in the artwork and how I've personally interpreted the symbols, but I would love to read her thoughts and find more Easter egg symbols in this deck because I think there's things that even I didn't notice um, even through that detailed walkthrough. So. I would love to pick that up at some point, so it is on my wish list to do, but I can only find it used. So I'll be trying to do that soon. Don't know how soon. But that was the Robin Wood Tarot. Really enjoyed working with it. It's not leaving my collection anytime soon. Pleasure all the way through beginning to end. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'll have another sip of tea. My phone is like beeping at me. Okay. Make sure my ringer's off, because that's what you should do when you film videos. Don't be me. All right, <laughs> so the Oracle deck that I was working with this week is an affirmation deck more than an Oracle deck. So it's not something I necessarily read in a, in a divinatory way, but I had so much fun with it. It is an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, it is in, this is like an OG Peggy bag. <laughs> this was before she switched to all cotton everything. And it's like this kind of funky feeling like holographic material. Perfect, sorry, I just kind of, checked out on you there, but it's perfect for this deck because this is the Affirmator's cards. Um, now the thing about these, these come in a hard box, but the bottom, the drawer, it's like a drawer style it, that it just, it just slides real, real easy and it bugs me. So I have to keep this in a bag. Otherwise, as soon as I pick it up, all the cards go everywhere and that is not fun times. But anyway, I keep all my decks in bags, so it's no hardship. The cardstock in this deck is novelty cardstock. It's real, real thin, papery, cardboardy, doesn't feel like it has a core or anything. Um, just your basic like novelty, like if you find these in Hallmark kind of cardstock, right? But the messages and the illustrations on this deck are so freaking cute. Not every single card has illustrations, some look like this. Um, but all of them are super cheeky and fun and full of personality. They're all affirmations, <coughs> sorry. They're all goals for the day things to think about and focus on. They're very um, self, obviously they're affirming and self-loving and they're just really, really playful. Um, I'll read one to you as an example here. Okay, so this one shows a car all wrapped up and it says, good things to come. There are so many amazing gifts coming my way. I can't see them now because I respect the general convention of not peeking under wrapping paper, but they will show up when the time is just right and that's when I'll remember how much fun it is to be surprised. Um, and there's, they're so good. Gratitude. 
Today I am grateful for all of the little things, even when the big things suck. There are always plenty of little things I can be at least a little grateful for, like hot showers and music and the fact that humans invented an internet and I'm allowed to use it whenever I want to, using finger and fingers and thumbs that do whatever I think them to do at any given moment. I just thought that was really funny. Now here's how I worked with this deck this week. I would pull a card, um, this is getting a little bowed because I've had this deck for a while now, but I would pull a card and then I would pull out my trusty Affirmators journal. So I bought this separately. The original Affirmators deck was a gift from my big sister and then later, so late last year actually, I bought the Affirmators journal. And the Affirmators journal, which by the way is edged in this gorgeous like rainbow beautifulness, I think it's not full rainbow, I just realized we're missing half the rainbow here. Well, that's frustrating. <laughs> Anyways, um, this has every single card from the deck in a full size page image exactly as it appears in the deck. And then on the facing page, you'll have prompts that are related specifically to this card. So this one, uh oh, uh oh, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> this is determination, folks. Let's have tea, that'll help. This is how bad I don't wanna edit. <laughs> You guys just get me exactly as I am. No jump cuts, ideally. <laughs> okay, so anyways, this one is about don't take it personally. And so over here, it's things I don't take personally, real things and imagined things, and you can just fill it in. So now what I've done, because I've had this journal for a bit now, is in some cases, let's see if I can find one to show you. Um, I may have already filled in a page or part of a page. So if I got that same card, I don't have any examples immediately popping up. Come on. I know there's like three or four of them in here. Nope, it's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen, folks, sorry. Anyways, if I had a page where I already filled in some of this information, I just added a new date for the date that I pulled the card and added even more thoughts. And so it's gonna be something that I can continue to go back to because I don't really fill up all of the pages. So I only pulled like six, seven, I guess, because I started on Saturday last weekend. So. Yeah, so I pull, pulled seven cards, so I filled in seven journal pages and added my thoughts. And I just, it made a really cool way to start my day to just think about those particular prompts. So I really enjoyed working with these two together, like, a lot. And there are other Affirmators decks. I don't know if there are other Affirmators journals, but I know that there is Affirmators at Work, which is work-themed stuff, obviously. I believe there's also a relationshipy or a love-based Affirmators as well. But these are super fun, and I believe they're also very inexpensive. I don't think there's a price on the back of the box, but I think they're probably in like the, I don't know, everything's Canadian up here. Um, in the US, maybe like $15, that's probably too much. They're probably a little, a little less than that, but they're easy to find and fairly affordable, I believe. So worth a pickup if you've never seen them, I think. Um, and you don't have, especially if you don't have very many affirmator, <laughs> affirmator, very many affirmation style decks, this one is really fun. So enjoyed working with that for sure. And the reading cloth that I have been using all week is one of my originals from Peggy back when she, I, when she, as if this was her choice. <laughs> I used to beg and plead and whine for her to back all of my cloths on like this um, velour or velvety fabric. So this is the one I've been working with for like three weeks now. I wanted these bright colors when I was working with the Alice deck. And then for all of last week, I used this dark purple side behind my cards, which just looked great with the big white borders on the Robin Wood Tarot. So I really enjoyed that. Great for pictures. Love this deck, but I have to say I am a convert to her new, not that new, I guess, um, but the way that she does all of her cloths and cottons now because they just, they're reversible and they look really nice on both sides and they're less bulky. So yes, but I do love these squishy original ones as well. <coughs> Some coughing. Sorry. So let's dive into what I'm going to be working with next week. So I did decide that I was going to be working with my new Crow Tarot by M.G. Cullinane. So um, I think, yeah, I did, did I, I did already talk about the fact that I did a comparison between this one and the Raven Tarot, yeah? Okay. If for any reason I haven't already linked those in the cards, I will link it in the cards, but I have to say, I am falling pretty hard for this deck just on flip through. Um, and you'll kind of see that happening for me during that video. First of all, here are the backings. So nice and classy. They're like raven feathers or crow feathers. 
um, but they're kind of in this like almost a chocolatey brown color. So not straight black, but still really, really dark and classy, classy, classic looking. Love those. More tea. I can do it. <laughs> and then it comes in this really sturdy two-piece box. Now I should point out that this is the US Games version of this deck. There was an indie version and the cardstock in the indie version, as I understand it, is a little bit thinner. Um, and I believe the box was a tuck box in that indie version. But anyway, this is the US Games version. And I was really hesitant to pick this up at first because um, I have backed the Wise Dog Tarot by this same artist, which is not yet out. I think it was due this month, but we are delayed, I believe. I don't think we have a new shipping date. But I was kind of hesitant because I'm like, well, do I want the crow one and the dog one? But when the Raven Tarot didn't work out for me, I really wanted a bird themed deck. I really did actually because I wanted, I'm, I'm working on building a reading for my shop that is all the elements. So I want a deck for earth, a deck for air, fire, water, and spirit. And the Dream Raven deck was the deck I thought I was going to be using as my air deck, but it didn't resonate. The images here really, really work for me. Um, we'll see how it is to actually work with. I haven't worked with it yet. I've only flipped through it and done the comparison, but I have to say I really love these images. I like the art style a lot, and oddly, I barely notice the borders, which is funny because I am a like mercenary deck trimmer, and the borders are actually different. So the majors have this like filigree up top. Oh, I forgot we're not in order. They have a filigree up top, usually with a number, except on the Fool, which doesn't have anything. The quartz, okay, sorry, the aces have a title at the bottom, but no filigree at the top. I love that ace of cups. Um, I thought the quartz, yes, the quartz also have a title at the bottom with no filigree at the top. And then the miners just have these thin borders all the way around. But for whatever reason, whether it's the color of the borders, which is slightly like earth toned and sort of in line with the artwork, I don't know if it's that or what, but I find that I'm not bothered by the borders at all, and I do think that this artwork is busy enough that I would not want this unbordered. So I really, really enjoy the aesthetic of this deck. The cardstock is nice and thick, and this deck feels nicely big, so it's a little bit wider than a standard deck. Oh, I've got my Robin Hood here. Look at me. I'm kind of prepared by accident. <laughs> so here is the Crow Tarot, and here is the Robin Hood, which is classic. So it's a little wider and a little taller. Um, and I love big decks. <laughs> I really do. Um, so I'm pleased that it's a little bit bigger. They always feel more luxurious to me when they have a little more size to them. And the cardstock feels like stiff. Not as stiff as the Spirit Song Tarot that US Games did by Polina Cassidy. Um, that deck is so stiff that it kind of hurts to shuffle, but this one doesn't hurt to shuffle. But it is, at least it doesn't hurt me, and I rifle shuffle. Um, but it is pretty thick. Um, but I like thicker cardstock. It does feel like it has a core. Ooh, it hand over hands really good. And it rifles really good. So I will see what this is like to work with this week. There is a little guidebook inside with some good information. And I believe possibly a spread or two. I think there's one spread and it's shaped like a crow. If I remember right. Yep, there it is. Crow tarot spread. <coughs> so there's quite a few... Um, like bits of media information for me to dig into <clears throat> in this deck. Gosh darn it. I want to make a whole video without coughing, please. So, very excited to be working with that. And oh my gosh, I'm 24 minutes in already. Let's get to the, let's get to the Oracle deck. The Oracle deck. <laughs> so this one is kind of an almost Jen made me buy it because she bought this deck first and I was like, I'm not going to get that. And then I totally went back and got it. This deck was one that, that I spotted when we were together at, <laughs> at Reflections Bookstore, and it really caught my eye for a couple of reasons. So this is called the Crystal Medicine Oracle. Um, the guidebook is really thick, which gets me kind of excited because there's a lot to dig into. Lots of beautiful illustrations in the guidebook, both of card images and some extra illustrations, which is really cool. <clears throat> but what caught my attention is that, A, the deck is round. <laughs> Some of you guys are going to be laughing so hard at me because I'm like, I want a round deck. No, I definitely don't want a round deck, but I really just want a round deck. But it has to be an oracle. 
because I don't want to play with reverse meanings in tarot. I'm going to lose my voice during this video. Watch it happen. Oh my god. Don't run out of tea. Don't run out of tea. <laughs> anyway, it's really cool. But what caught my attention is that there are three things to work with. So there is over here a crystal. Up here, you have a keyword or message. And then over here, you have another sort of shamanic reference. So for example, this one is summer. Oh, this one is spring, rebirth, and Shiva Lingam. This one is retreat, mountain, and green calcite, that sort of thing. So what's cool is that because this is a round deck, when I was playing with this in the store and I was shuffling it, I realized that as it moves around and it changes directions and stuff, however I flip it over, whatever is on top, so I flip it over, okay, blue barite is on top just because of the directionality of the card. That's the section in the guidebook that has the most meaning for me today. That's how I decided I was going to work with it. So we'll see how that plays out throughout the week because if I'm making any sense. In the guidebook, you have a little section of text for each of those things. So you have a section on the oracle message, which is the bit at the top. You have a section about the, the medicine, which is the shamanic keyword. And then you have a section about the crystal or information about the crystal. And what really caught my attention when I was in the store looking at this the first time when my sister and I were there together was the ceremony. So there's like a little mini ritual suggested and these are usually meditative and solitary in nature from what I can tell on initial flip through. So I thought this would be a really wonderful deck to just work with some shamanic principles and messages. I love that crystals are sort of embedded in the messages as well but I liked the idea of using the directionality when I flip a card to determine which part of the guidebook I should pay the most attention to. The crystal, the oracle, or the um, shamanic symbol, or shamanic keyword rather, shamanic medicine. Um, and yeah, that just really caught my attention. It's a fairly small deck. There's um, 44 cards, and it's not giant to hold, so it's sometimes um, round decks can be really, really big. I have already rifled this and hand over handed it. I really love hand over handing it. Um, it just feels really good. So we will see what this is like to work with this week. I'm actually legit excited. So, woo, I almost threw it. So that is a deck I'm gonna be working with as an Oracle deck. And the reading cloth I'm going to be working with is this one. It's like this like stone slate on this side and this really cool like rustic whitewashed wood on the other side. So that is the, the cloth I will be using with my Instagram photos. And I'm excited to continue to work with Tracy over at Temperance Tarot's Reversed Tarot Challenge with the Crow Tarot. So I will really be enjoying that. That about wraps it up. I know that was a long one. So thanks for hanging out with me and my coughing and my voice and all of that good stuff. But thanks for hanging out with me as I went through my decks. If you have any of these decks, the Dream Raven, the Crow, the Robin Wood, the Crystal Medicine, the Crow Tarot, I said Crow already, the Affirmators, let me know your thoughts on them down below. Or if any of these caught your attention, let me know your thoughts on that. I would love to have a discussion in the comments. You guys know I love that. So. Thank you so much for hanging out, and I will see you again in my next one. Talk to you later. Bye!